All right. This is some uh, live footage earlier. Well, I think it's still going on of uh, Trump entering the courthouse. <laughs> and look, you got. Look at these two old guys walking him in. There's this guy. <laughs> That's some security protection. Former President Donald Trump. I believe that's his attorney. On his left. <laughs> Get it together with that camera. Come on, guy. Guy? Bruh. Bruh. Easy now. Dude. There he goes. What's he gonna say? Look, his attorney to his left. Well, I guess on the screen it'd be to his right. He's probably going, oh my god, he's gonna say something wrong. Look at his attorney. He goes all crap. Before she even knew anything about me. She used this to run for governor. She failed in her attempt to run for governor. She had virtually no polling. She came back and she said, well, now I'll go back to get Trump again. And this is what... His attorney, look at his face. He's probably like, I wish he would stop talking. <laughs> we have is a scam. It's a sham. Just so you know, my financial statements are phenomenal. Phenomenal. They're actually less in terms of the numbers used than the actual net worth. The actual net worth is substantially more. No bank was affected. No bank was hurt. They don't even know why they have to be involved. And they've so testified. They can't believe that they're involved because they were paid back on time. There were no defaults. There were no problems. And it was like a perfect client. Oh my God, these Democrats just try to t bring, just throw everything in the kitchen sink to try to get this man not to run for office. Now, y'all should know who they're scared of. Whenever they go after somebody, just everything in the kitchen sink, just throwing, let's just keep throwing shit at the wall until something sticks <laughs> because they're afraid of them, obviously. In the meantime, people are being murdered all over the sidewalks of New York. There was no victim here. The banks were represented by the best, biggest, most prestigious law firms in the state of New York, actually in the country. Some of the biggest and best law firms, in all cases, the biggest and best law firms that should represent them. The banks got back their money. Again, there was never a default. There was never a problem. Everything was perfect. There was no crime. The crime is against me yeah. because we have a corrupt district attorney, a corrupt attorney general, and it all comes down from the DOJ. They're totally coordinated. It's in Washington because I'm leading. I'm the leading candidate. I'm leading Biden by 10 points, and I'm leading the Republicans by 50 and 60 points. How could it only be 10 points he's leading Biden? Damn. Seems like it should be way more than that. Ain't, ain't America had enough of this Biden crap? That's pretty much, they say, over. I never accept that, but they say it's over. This has to do with election interference, plain and simple. True that. They're trying to damage me so that I don't do as well as I'm doing in the election. Our country's gone to hell. We have a country that's in decline, serious decline. We have a man running our country who has no clue, doesn't know what he's doing, and you know it better than anybody because you have to cover him. What? Even if you don't like Trump, 
And that's fine. But Deb, blame. We don't need another four years of Biden. What they've done with open borders, what they've done with interest rates and taxes, it's a disgrace. So what we have here is an attempt to hurt me in an election. It's an attempt to hurt me in an election. True. It's never happened before where President of the United States leaves an office and gets indicted. And the reason I got indicted was that I ran. If I didn't run, I'd be sitting right now at a beach like Biden does every time, even though he's supposed to be working. So very simply put, it's a witch hunt. It's a disgrace. He, he just says all the right things. That's just awesome. We have a corrupt attorney general in this state. You see how she does? This trial was railroaded and fast-tracked. This trial could have been brought years ago, but they waited till I was right in the middle of my campaign. The same with other trials and indictments. It's yeah. all run by DOJ, which is corrupt in Washington. Everything goes through them. They're all corrupt people. Frankly, our country is corrupt. And that's one of the reasons I'm running. We're going to straighten it out. They have one property that's worth anywhere from 50 to 100 times what this judge put down as a value. Put down a value, $18 million, and the property's probably worth, could be anywhere from 50 to 100 times more than that. And a lot of those numbers could even be low. We have other properties, the same thing, so he devalued everything. I didn't even put in my best asset, which is the brand, in terms of value. Coca-Cola, take a look at their value. They have a value. The value of their brand is more than everything else put together. My brand is extremely valuable. I didn't even use it in my financial statement. If I wanted to build up a financial statement, I would have built it up by using brand in addition to everything else. We have the greatest properties. We have among the greatest properties in the world, and I have to go through this for political reasons. This judge is a politician. He comes out of the clubs. He's running unopposed. The reason he's unopposed is because he's getting Trump. They always run opposed. He's getting Trump. The bosses say, don't run against this guy. He's doing great. He's getting Trump. But he overplayed his hand that he should be investigated for what he's done. What he did in undervaluing these properties is a disgrace to our nation. This shouldn't be a case. One other thing. We have a clause in the contract which tells, essentially, buyer beware. The contract is very, very, if you take a look and you speak to the banks, and you will, I hope you speak to the banks, because the banks got paid in full. I hope you speak to the banks. So we have a clause in the contract. It's like a buyer beware clause. It says when you take a look at the financial statement, don't believe anything you read. This is up front. Don't believe anything you read. Some people call it a worthless clause because it makes the statement and anything you read in the statement worthless. It says go out and do your own research. Go out and do your own due diligence. You have to study the statement carefully. Do not believe anything. In fact, it's so strong that people read it and they don't even <laughs> accept it. They don't even want it. They don't even use it. It's called a disclaimer clause. It's very common. If you put it in, if you don't have time to do statements, or even if you do have time, people like to have it. This is what's called a full disclaimer. We disclaim the financial statements. But even with a full disclaimer, which immediately takes you out of any fraud situation and any litigation. And by the way, when the Attorney General found out about the disclaimer, she said, that's okay, let's go forward anyway. Good publicity. These are corrupt people we're dealing with. The most corrupt people. We have a great company. I built a great company. It's got tremendous value. It's got some of the greatest real estate assets in the world. And oh. The judge, I don't as know a what continuation of Russia, 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 as a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time, and I don't think the people of this country are going to stand for it. If I weren't I leading not. in all the polls, or if I weren't running, I wouldn't have any of these cases. I wouldn't be seeing you this morning. But I'll be seeing a lot of you because this is a horrible thing that's happening to our country and we've got to get it straightened away. So we'll go in and see our rogue judge and we'll listen to this man. 
And uh, I think most people get it. People are getting it. I can tell you the voters getting it because every time they give me a fake indictment, I go up in the polls and that's never happened before. But this is a disgrace. And you ought to go after this attorney general because she's turning off everybody from coming in. You know, I don't know if you should take a look at the outflow of business. Businesses are fleeing New York because of horrible, horrible attorney generals and judges like we have. Wow. They go to other places where they can be treated fairly and with respect. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank ah, they're you. leaving California, too, because of the crap. Oh, my God. Back up. All right, here he is uh, coming back out. I kind of fast forwarded to the other stuff. He is so right on that point. The crap that's going on at the border. Murders in the state of New York. All over. California. All of this mess going on, and they're wasting all their time and energy on Trump. If they were so awesome, why would they even worry about him? If they were so awesome, and Biden's going to get reelected because everybody loves their policies and, and likes what's happening. Then, by all means, vote for Biden. Why should they give a damn about Trump? Because they scared. With banks that were very happy, they got all their money back. They weren't defrauded. I've been defrauded. With a judge that ruled that a building and a property is worth $18 billion. $18 billion. When, in fact, it's worth over a billion. Probably oh, wow. a billion and a half. It may be mm, worth it. When many properties which I sold are worth much more than were listed in the financial statements, like double and triple, what do you have to do? And we're wasting our time on this trial with a Democrat judge from the clubhouses. It's a disgrace. They ought to look for the murderers and the killers that yeah. are all over New York killing people. Yeah. And the violent crime that's being committed in our city and our state is disgraceful. And we're going to be here for months with a judge that already made up his mind. It's ridiculous. He's a Democrat judge. He's an operative. And it's ridiculous. Other than that, things went very well. Nice. Uh, probably. <laughs> Uh, here he is coming back uh, after, I guess this was the lunch break. Coming back after the lunch break. Is that his wife? Who is that? Is that his wife? I can't tell. Well, there you go. I had to hurry it up. <laughs> He's pissed. Okay, thank you, everybody. This is a disgraceful situation. As I say, murders are going on as you stand here, and they're wasting everybody's time for many months of this case where banks got paid a fortune, loan money got paid money back, didn't even need that money. It's still a great company. We have to go through this. Uh, he doesn't even need to run for president. I mean, the guy has money at the wazoo. Like he said earlier, he could be sitting on a beach drinking Mai Tais or whatever he wants to do. But he loves this country. And he wants to fix it. So this just broke, but before I discuss that, why are we trying a case that the Appellate Division of New York State has just ruled recently that we won 80% of our case, and this judge refuses to acknowledge the ruling, which is very plain for all to see. 
We won, as you know, it had to do with Ivanka, and it had to do with other things. It had to do with the statute of limitations, where they wanted to go back to 200 years ago, 500 Good Lord. years ago. Uh, it was limited, very much limited, and it amounted to about 80 percent of the case was won by us in the appellate division. And this rogue judge, a Trump hater, the only one that hates Trump more is his associate up there, his <laughs> person that works with him. And she's screaming into his ear in almost every time we ask a question. A mm. Disgrace. You want to know the truth? It's a disgrace. So this rogue judge refuses to acknowledge the fact that we won 80% of this case in the appellate division, including statute of limitations. You know, in the statute of limitations, you have a period of time. He wants to go back so far that nobody's ever even heard of such a ridiculous thing. So we won the case in the appellate division, and this judge refuses to acknowledge the appellate division, meaning he's got contempt for his own court system. Nobody's ever seen that before, where he refuses to even talk about it or acknowledge it. And the Attorney General is a total corrupt, she's a corrupt person, a terrible person, driving people out of New York, number one. That's number one. Number two, it just came out a few minutes ago, where Palm Beach County, the people that do this, agree with us 100 percent, and they say the judge is wrong. The judge is wrong in his ruling. He valued Mar-a-Lago at $18 million, and it's worth a billion dollars, maybe a billion to five. Wow. And you saw where various properties that we have that are valued in the financial statements, which is totally subject to the clause that you've all been hearing about doing buyer beware, as they call it. But this just came out. Era in New York civil fraud case against Trump is flagged by industry insiders who say valuation of Mar-a-Lago cited by judge is based on a misunderstanding of basic real estate practice. <laughs> so they're saying the judge has misunderstood basic real estate practice. I say they're wrong about that. He didn't misunderstand it. This is a rigged court. He's put there to do a job on Trump. Now this comes from highly respected officials in Palm Beach County. Also, apparent mistake by Judge Angoran surfaces in the use of a Palm Beach County appraisal of Mar-a-Lago that, an expert says, is detached from the true value of the property. Now, I don't know the people that we're talking about in Palm Beach County, but they saw this egregious trial, this horrible, horrible trial going on. While at the same time, people are being murdered right outside of the streets. Damn. And nothing happens to those people that do the murdering. They go after Trump. So this was just released by Palm Beach County, that the judge in this case is wrong. And by the way, he's talking about them. So they're explaining to him that he's wrong. Here's another one just came out. New York v. Trump could set precedent for the use of New York's overweening executive law. One doesn't have to be a lawyer to see the danger to anyone doing business in the Empire State. Anybody that does business in New York State is crazy. When you have a radical left attorney general like Letitia James, who's a disgrace to our country, who got elected on the fact that she's going to take down President Trump, we're going to take him down, she knew nothing about me. I mean, years ago, Rush Limbaugh was going to leave, was leaving New York because they audited him every year. And it was just a, an inconvenience for him because they didn't like him because he was a conservative. He was the conservative voice. So I understand what Trump is saying. It's probably crazy to do business in New York. Because if you say something out of line, you're going to go after you. But she got elected on that basis. And we have others likewise. Take a look at what's going on in Georgia. Take a look at Jack Smith. Take a look at these people. This is called election interference and worse than that. Really wow. much worse than that. 
And you don't get much worse than election interference, especially we're talking presidential election of 2024. So this judge should change his ruling because Palm Beach County said he was totally wrong and he was ruling based on them. He ruled we didn't even have a chance to testify. I got a call last week, sir, we lost part of the case. I said, the trial didn't even start. You know, the trial starts, I guess, today. He ruled that we lost a big part of the case because he's a Democrat club oh. politician. Oh. He's a Democrat operative. Oh. And he's a disgrace to people that call themselves judges. And I hope my lawyers go in and I hope they fight him very hard because this guy's getting away with murder. And his clerk should not be allowed to be in his ear on every single question. You take wow. a look at what's happening with her. She hates Trump more than he does. <laughs> so that's where it is. We have 80% of this trial has been won. In June, they came down, <laughs> the end of June, with a decision, a very powerful decision. And it said, on statute of limitations and just about everything else, would you say approximately 80% of the trial? Yes, sir. The fair news, is that right? Yes, sir. Approximately 80% of the trials won. He refuses to acknowledge his own appellate division. And I think it's a disgrace to our country. And somebody has to fight, because if you don't fight, our country is just going to go down the tube. This is election interference. This guy's a highly partisan person. And we can't let this stuff happen. So you should ask yourselves as professionals, I have a lot of respect for you, not all of you, but a lot of you. Why is it that he didn't honor the decision of the appellate? And by the way, I believe it was a unanimous decision, right? It's a five to nothing decision, unanimous decision. And he said, I'm not going to honor it. Let's go to trial. This is a judge that should be disbarred. This is a judge that should be out of office. This is a judge that some people say could be charged criminally for what he's doing. He's interfering with an election, and it's a disgrace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Trump, why do you want to be here in person today? Because I want to watch this witch hunt myself. I've been going through a witch hunt for years. But this is really now getting dirty between Jack Smith and between all of these DOJ people helping them along. This is a pure witch hunt for purposes of interfering with the elections of the United States of America. It's totally illegal. This judge should be disbarred. He shouldn't be allowed to be a judge. Thank you. Oh. All right, this is uh, some footage of them in the courtroom which is just a, a clown show. Then I guess they kicked them all out after when the proceedings started. And there you go. The lawyer's smiling. That's always a good sign. Whether you like him or not, he stopped the flood from the borders. We didn't have all these problems. We didn't have tent cities. This is a Biden's tent city. This is just odd. That they like that because uh, they don't have cameras in there. They just let them in here to be like a circus. It's just a circus. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> oh no, he didn't. Oh, no, he. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, what, what, hold up, hold up. Oh, I need to go back further. 
All right, is this is this who Trump's talking about? She keeps whispering in his ear. What? Is he another Biden? He can't keep up with nothing? She whispers, okay, I need you to say this, okay? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what? What the hell? I wish there were cameras in there so we could see that action. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Now the world knows who I am. I'm a dork. Okay. Bruh. Bruh. What's up with the camera? Oh, they kicking you out? You got the boot? Yeah, I guess that's, uh... Yeah, they, they kicked him out of there. He said, bye. Well, we'll close out with this. This little title here. This fraud case has everything to everything Trump wants. Truly. I guess. All right. I don't know. But the mugshot sure made him more popular. Whether you like Trump or not, we need something other than Biden. Get somebody in there that's going to get this crap done. And stop the madness. Stop letting George Soros, who ain't even an American citizen, be so influential on our little minds full of mush. I don't know how they're going to do that because he's just throwing money out like it's nobody's business. All right. There you go. And that's what's happening.